definition of what is good and what is bad. What is allowed and what is disallowed. What is okay and what is taboo, right? Those things, they travel with us based on the culture we grew up in, the country we're from. So this is a really, really basic example and excuse just how basic I'm going with this. But how many of you have ever been to a building where there's no 13th floor because 13 is an omen and it's a bad number, right? You just take it for granted. If you walk into an elevator, like it's a little, let's just think about that for a second. It's a little crazy, but literally they won't put a 13 button. Everybody knows why that's crazy, right? There is a 13th fucking floor. They just decided not to number it 13. It's not like the 13th floor just disappeared. There's not a space in between the 12th floor and the 14th. There's a 13th floor that is number 14. That's how skewed we are in the way that we need to change how we relate to the world. But I'm going to make it even more complicated. In China, nobody cares about the number 13. The number four is a bad omen number. So they do the exact same thing with the fourth floor. Chinese people don't like buying houses that have four in the house number. I live at 4144 Kenway. I wonder sometimes, maybe like if I ever have a Chinese guest or a friend, if they'll walk by my house and go, oh, no, 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 that's that's not happening. I'm not walking in that place. I think we're all at least logical enough to understand there's something weird that in two completely different cultures, a completely different number is considered something you're supposed to avoid. But we take it for granted if we were born in the space. None of you ever thought about the fact that there's not a, I mean, maybe once when you figured it out, you thought, oh, that's weird. There's no 13th floor in this building. And that's it. You just let it go. I'm telling you right now that happened 50,000 times in your life. Just most of those things you've actually never stopped to think about because you just take them as fact. My assertion here today, the thing I want to talk about more than anything else is going to be really hard for all of us to hear. I didn't make it up. I really learned it the first time from my wife and a manifesting work and Bruce Lipton and some of those other people that some of you who've been with me a long time have heard me talk about. But there are a lot of things that are holding you back right now in your life that are just truths you've adopted in the past, ways of looking in the world that you've adopted in the past as real. Now, the reason that's really upsetting to hear sometimes is because it, a lot of people will move into that space like I used to around this. And we start feeling guilt and shame around the idea that we are actually in control of some of these pieces. But I want to change the conversation around that. It would be magical thinking to assume that you would have the ability, the built-in ability to just change the world around you when you were born. Everybody, how many people here have been babies before? You know, when you're a baby, you are absolutely dependent on your sur survival, absolute survival on everybody around you. You can do nothing for years. You are unable to do anything on your own. That's not true for all animals. There are a lot of animals, day one, they're out and running about. They're fully functional on day one of being born. And humans aren't like that. A lot of mammals aren't like that, but humans are especially not like that. Whether we like it or not, we're going to talk about what it means here in a moment. What do you think that does to you? If from day one, you are literally unable to feed yourself, walk, escape danger, take shelter, stay warm, what does that 